mistletoe, midnight Christmas Eve. Your sweet kiss is the first gift. We can do it again. I'd like to be seen. <laughs> so, um, do you, do you think, <coughs> what, what do you think, oh, tell me, tell Here, me. Here, I got a question for you. <laughs> <myself. laughs> I'm lost. Okay, so what do y'all think of the krill? Uh, uh, I think it reminds me of what whales eat. <laughs> what whales <laughs> eat? <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> yes, that whales, is an accurate statement. Interesting fact, whales do eat krill. <laughs> <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> um, I, I think that they're a really cool combination between uh, Cardassian and Klingons. Yeah. You know, they're devoted to the state and they have that horrible, that super, you know, thing about the state, and that religion, Akanarwanka, mm -hmm. or Karanda. <laughs> anyway, uh, but still they have that fighter, warrior spirit like the Klingons do. Yeah, that's what, that was my next question is, do you think that that's Seth MacFarlane's take on the Klingons? It's definitely the Klingons of this show, yeah. Maybe an homage to the Klingons. Uh, even, yeah. Definitely. More of, than more of a take. Okay, but they eliminated... They, okay, so I was just trying to remember the episode. So they eliminated the crew members with the exception of a bunch of kids, but you remember, like, the teacher, didn't she say, like, they're going to hate you? Like, for, they're going to grow up to hate you? So maybe that's, like, a season two thing. Well, yeah, yeah, I think we're going to see a lot more of the Krill because that, that seems to be the arch enemy, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, it kind of makes you wonder, like, in, a, in such a, a, a large union of uh, planetary union there, that, uh, you know, they wouldn't be able to, like, Krill or, like, these rogue renegades living in their own space. Like, how are they encroaching upon this space so much? You know, is it, uh, they're uncharted space, so this is obviously outside the Union's jurisdiction that they're traveling and, and exploring. So that's why they're seeing a bunch of Krill. Like, uh, at, at what point do we know that we're not in planetary Union space? I want to I know. I want to see a map. I yeah. want to see a map. I need maps. Give me some maps, Seth. <laughs> Yeah, maybe that's what it, he he needs to be working on that. Because I know looking at the Star Trek star charts and the maps that I have, you know, that that shows uh, Voyager's um, all all mm -hmm. every, everywhere Voyager went and everything. It helps me, especially when I'm watching the show, to just place it in my yeah. in my mind as far as where they are in relation to Earth and other other points that we know in the Star Trek universe. If you follow that, you know, it's good, it's really good for continuity. You know, so you're not going to be like, well, we're over here. And there's somehow they're over here as well, even though they're way over here. Mm -hmm. And that made a lot of sense, I'm sure. It wasn't vague at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> but still, I, I want I want to see a map. I want to know what this galaxy looks like. You know, even yeah. if I don't know who they are, I want to see some names of some planets and some empires and stuff. And, uh, like, they have those super advanced people. They're somehow like, a couple days away from Earth. Basically, you know, because the, they... The red people? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what's up with but, that? But, yeah, but yet their space is off-limits. Yeah. Like, I mean, is it like a, the, the Tolian kind of thing in the original Enterprise? You know, where they're not allowed to go there? Uh, but, you know, they break the rules anyway, because Captain Pike's there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, then, they also, in the one, the, the season finale, they just encountered this planet that phases in every 11 days, and they just watched it from the Bronze Age all the way to, Yeah, it makes you, know, you wonder, like, you know, the if they, century, they've been showed up a couple weeks early, would they seen dinosaurs? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I'm kidding, I mean. <laughs> yeah, and so, well, if, they're, if it's phasing in every 11 days, 700 years on their end, mm -hmm. oh my God, wouldn't you want to stick around to see? I want to see yeah. them become gods. Yeah. yeah, I mean, because certainly... It looked like they were on their way in that last one. Well, it yeah, didn't even look suits, like a planet. Man. It looked like a ship. Oh, I know. That was so... Like that the was lights so, coming out of the stations. Giant statues. Or not statues. Those giant buildings coming out. Like, all of them. Like, that was so cute. Yeah. Because they look like maybe they were more advanced than the Union. Yeah, they could, like, channel teleport and shit. That was so cool. Uh, yeah, and I just wonder, like, if somebody would eventually figure out how to keep them mm -hmm. in in one or the other. I don't know. Because <laughs> they also said that maybe at one point they would study them. So well, that's that. I mean, they're probably already doing it without anyone realizing because they've, like, they, they've become energy or some shit, you know? 
A couple hundred, well, I'm in Put a camera on board. Well, you know, and that, this, I was watching an episode of DS9 this week that reminded me a lot of the season finale of the Orville. It, do you remember the one where, um, Cisco and Bashir and Dax were out in the Defiant and they ran across a planet that would phase in like every 60 days? And there was like a settlement of 30 people on there and they end up going down there and Dax ends up falling in love with one of the guys. Oh yeah. And he was going to leave with her but then okay. she, she decided to stay with him. But then she was like an anchor and the planet couldn't phase. Oh dang. So they had to get her out of there. I forgot about that episode. Yeah. I've seen him too many times. You forget them. Um, there's so many. There is so many. But yeah, watching that this week it reminded me of the Orville. Because it was that same okay, thing. Yeah, that, we're phasing it out. Yeah, Cisco, they were in the Defiant just bebopping along. It's like, bop, oh, wait, here's a planet. <laughs> Do you remember the episode on Next Generation where uh, they go back in time to see Guinan back uh, around Mark Twain? Yes. The data goes back there, and, you know, th that, that, that reminds me of that. You know, we're talking about, uh, you know, comparisons between Star Trek and the Orville. That was totally straight up, like, you know, him going, I'm going to, I can go, I can last millions of years. You yeah. know, and I'm like, what he says he can last millions of years, but you know that kind of makes you uh, wonder. Part part of being, you know, because he's like studying humanity, he doesn't necessarily want, like want to uh, emulate humanity. It seems he just wants to study them, so he doesn't have like that, you know, uh, sense of mortality that Data kind of felt in a way, you know, because he was trying to like at least trying to feel, because uh, he thought it may have been part of humanity, you know, knowing that his end was there. So, you know, we we. The only way that uh, we're ever going to lose Isaac is if he's killed. But it makes me wonder if they're ever going to upgrade his suit. Yeah. I don't know. I like Isaac. He's growing he's up. A, he's, a, he's a good character. Yeah. He is a good I like the episode with him I and like the kids. I like he's good with kids, yeah. Yeah. That was a cute episode. Yeah, and, really. and you can see that they do spend time together. You know, After that. that. Yeah, because in that, that one that mostly focused on Lamar, you know, the, the kids stopped him in the hallway. Yeah. You know. <laughs> That was cute. Hey, that was cute. Yeah. It's so cute. Oh my god. Oh my god, my green outfit. <laughs> um, so I know that we had um, we had Robert Picardo on there mm -hmm. playing a lot. Is it Alara? Alana? Alara. Alara's father. Do you? Are there any other Star Trek people you would like to see on the show? I would kill to see Patrick Stewart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think that he is his humor, like his real life humor, is so in tune with that. that yeah, humor I, in I that think show. so. I think he would be perfect in in that. Um, what about you, D? Oh, there's so many. Um, Kess. <laughs> Had to. <laughs> no, Kess. Um, I think Jonathan Frakes would be funny on there. Yes. Yeah, any of, actually any of Next Generation, because they all kind of have that raunchy kind of humor going on. Um, I, I really kind of would like to see, oh, his name is blanking me. Jeffrey Combs. I'd yes. really like to see Jeffrey Combs. I more thought about Combs, that baby, more Combs. Yes. <laughs> we need all the Combs as we can get. I just saw him in an episode of DS9 where he tried to get the Hollywood program of Kira. <laughs> so Quark's trying to always yeah. try to get her image, and then they sabotage it and put her body with his. Oh God, on. that is so funny! <laughs> and I never realized that was Jeffrey Combs playing that guy. Mm -hmm. Really? Until I watched it again. He played so many different ones. On he there. did. Alara's gonna have a relationship with someone because you know they keep talking about that ex-boyfriend yeah. or whatever of hers. Mm -hmm. They're like, "How are you doing? You ready to get back out there?" And she's like, "No, not yet." You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, maybe because a lot of them are intimidated. Yeah, by her, by her strength. And I think her and Lamar would make a good couple. I thought that too. Yeah. Mm, I don't want to see. Uh, I don't really want to see uh, bridge character like the, the main characters like get together on that show. I, I really, I really think with that, each other. You mean? Yeah. Oh, okay. I really, I really would rather see them go off and like have like because you know when as as we uh, found out in the last episode, uh, you know when you when you have that kind of dynamic in a situation. You know, people are going to cover for one another in, in bad ways. And, yeah. and, you know, there's just the conflict of interest, I think, would be something they should avoid. Yeah. But, and, and compromise their character, per, mm -hmm. you know, their personal character. I yeah. feel like that something that wouldn't be too weird and have too many, like, matters of the heart. I think that uh, Isaac and the Doctor. 
No, no, it's it's Yafit and the doctor. No, God, <laughs> no. Yeah, let I'm Norm have his chance. Yafit, yeah. What is wrong with y'all? That was the sex. I want to experience that sex. Okay, okay so. so mm-hmm. Okay. That would be the best sex ever. Okay, so. Getting all the holes. Get everything. Doesn't Gelatinous sex. sex. Holy crap. I would mold say, mold the new fish. fish. <laughs> I really feel I would I would be really pissed off if they pursued that because she has over and over and over expressed her dislike for them, a dislike for him, and for them to be like, oh well, no, it's okay, and then morph her into liking him. I would not. Like I her. wouldn't say it would be. It a might be some like over say, a while she realizes that he's got parts of his personality. Yeah, she but likes. you know that that could also. She's looking for role models for her children. Yafit is not a role Yafid, model. That, she's got a point there. Yeah. And I think that I think that Isaac uh, would make like a good uncle figure. But, but not a good rom- daddy. No, that would not be a good romantic. Yeah. I don't think that... I don't know. It and well, happen. no, you know, I think part of, and I could be wrong because I'm not Seth, but part of her <laughs> uh, shoving Yafit, you know, turning him down so many times, I mean, she's so used to being a strong woman, you know, she had those mm-hmm. kids on her own. You know, she didn't get married, you know, she went, base, I guess, the equivalent of, I guess, a sperm bank or something. Yeah. Right. You know, right. Yeah. And did that, you know, and after she had that experience, you know, it's not his fault that um, Derulio's yeah, emotion that's that's got true. everywhere. And, you know, she was feeling it too. And so what if it took that, you know, drastic event? Just hmm. to, like, yeah. oh, well, you know, that was really good. Hmm. I actually didn't but. mind that. Hmm. Yeah, and you know, I mean, no. she could end up seeing parts of his personality that she likes. And but it also could be the, uh, it, it could, it could also come back to like you know, like socially now, uh, the guy, you know, in, in in society now, you know, how how people have it's becoming more socially aware of that type of male that's always like, hey, hey, how's it going? Hey, yeah, come on, exactly. Come on, come on. Well, you know, I, can, I can see that. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, yeah. I, I think that 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 could that could be a a, a, a re- that is a really good thing against it. Uh, but I'm still teaming off him because come on, <laughs> he's just it's Norm Macdonald. I love him too much to hate him. And I, I'm not saying I hate him, but he can go. They can have a sex scene with him in every episode if they want, mm-hmm. just not with the doctor. Mm. Okay, Bordis. Okay, good. Just let him spread his love around the ship. Are you, is it because it's the Doctor, or is it because it's Cassidy Yates? Or is it because he's gelatinous and you're being racist against him? <laughs> no, it's none of the above. If he was red jello, would you not be as upset? Or blue, even. Because well, I think he really needs some blue. If, I, if I'm going to be totally honest, I read an article jelly. online about the, the uh, sexist, misogynistic things. That are presented in the show, and that being one of them, and it just—it's true. Know. It's true. It is something to take into consideration. Are and you um, upset that those things are in the show? No, I think it brings to light, but I don't think that we should be rooting for you know him and his predatory ways, and to like it's morph true. somebody that doesn't like him into convincing them to like him. I don't know. Well, maybe he'll meet a pink jelly. I hope he does. Re- to, I I mean, hope somebody. Some kind of ooh, like somebody who's filled with holes, and he's just like, ooh, let me get up in there. You know? <laughs> Does it, is that, was that too much? I'm sorry. That was just enough. <laughs> that was just enough. You know, somebody. <laughs> look at Dee's face. I mean, it's. She's like, God damn it, I wish I knew where a slime man was. I mean, it, it, I'm, I'm trying to picture someone who's filled with holes and what those holes look it's like. It's like a honeycomb we're looking all, person. We're all really. I don't know, holes. like just a different yeah. alien species. Yeah, boy, we do have a bunch of pores on you. Can he you get know. through pores? Makes you wonder if he can like seep through pores. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta sweat you off it out. Yeah. Or I wonder if. Uh, no, you don't have to sweat him out. He just dives in and gets gets himself oh, yes, out of here. Oh, he does. <laughs> That's nasty. Really cleanse your colon. <laughs> um. So uh, yeah, I don't. I do not want to see Ed and uh, Kelly get back together. I think that their dynamic of them being apart uh, is way better apart than they would be together because I don't know it just it doesn't feel right they could yeah. be they're, they're more objective they complement each other better as yeah. friends they are and they're more objective to each other's decision or can yeah. make objective observations about the other one's decisions because it showed that in that last one 
when they tried to get together, you know, and he ended up making the decision not to tell the Admiral that Kelly had mm -hmm. made contact, yeah. you know, and, you know, he even said other, you know, I, I probably would have said something if we hadn't have been talking about Dayton and Absolutely. stuff like that, you know. And it's a conflict of interest that just, you know, Brent, his first in command, he doesn't need that. No. <clears throat> so what if, what if he did tell the Admiral about what happened with her? Would they have sent in a team to... S to make sure the culture wasn't contaminated. I mean, like, what would have been the purpose of him telling them? She well, he said if he had told, then Kelly would have been off the ship. Yeah, they would have had her, you know, t taken to the next star base. She broke a rule, or, or you yeah. know, even you know, kicked they're, out. Yeah. yeah, like demoted. Yeah, yeah. they're they're equivalent of the prime directive. Yeah, you know. So, but it would have happened anyways. Yeah, with, with somebody. You know? Yeah, I mean, especially it the way that they've been acting on a lot of these. They're really unprofessional on all these uh, excursions they're doing on planets. I mean, yeah. like with Lamar and his, like, humping of a statue, and, you know, and then uh, this, you know, the cat contamination. And, I mean, I don't know, I wish, they, I wish they'd get a little more professional on things. I enjoy the comedic aspect of it. I feel like, I feel it, like yeah. it's better like that because then they're more prone to... I don't want to say like humanizing, that's not the right word, but it's like everyone makes mistakes, so in a way it's like yeah. you're learning with them about what's going on and not everyone's super. Well, it, and it also kind of shows the pres... what's the word? Um, presumptuousness, mm -hmm. you know, because going on another planet, um, the, yeah, these people may look like you, but they don't have the same beliefs, the same cultural values, and, yeah, you know, something as innocent as, I mean, even like, you know, here in our time, like sh uh, sitting in a chair and crossing your legs and showing the bottom of your shoe to someone, you know, I mean, that's complete disrespect in some countries. Chewing, uh, eating your food very sloppily, you know, like making a lot of slurping sounds and stuff like that is, you know, no-no in our, our place, but you'll agree yeah. over there. Yeah. Same, yeah. same thing, yeah. But yeah, talking about it, they don't have the best manners. Like even at the end of the episode where they're going back and trying to fix her issue, they just walk up to these people and say, here, let's steal these clothes off this clothesline. As if that's okay. Really, you yeah. know, they could have had something being down or something like that. Or not being down, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Right, replicated it's or yeah. these clothes. Yeah. That, and then, you know, that even she even further contaminated when she blessed the woman's child because now that woman's going to tell stories and around in that little area it's going to you know keep going on and on and on mm, and it did and they, and they proved it but thankfully the uh the future the future people in the super ass cool white clothes which i'm so into that outfit yeah <laughs> yeah I mean, those were nice outfits oh, and the guy I'm was wearing eyeliner and i was outfit. like yeah this works <laughs> and then they were asking isaac you know what did it was it hard to no i just walked walked up to them and told them what needed to happen <laughs> I mean, yeah. no. Isaac, please come here. Please, please, please. Yeah. No bones about it. Oh, God, if he'd come here, they'd have him dismembered and, you yeah. know. And Do we need a Lara? Come kick yeah. my ass. Yeah. But she got shot, and she was like, I mean, she's got all this superhuman strength, but her skin is not even, like, can't even withstand a bullet. Kind of makes you, like, uh... Well, the only reason she's stronger is because the gravity's different. Yeah, but, you know, how... You, the gravity should should maybe even like the skin. Her skin may even maybe more. It should be more dense, maybe. Yeah, because it should be the more gravity dense. Because is, well, that it's makes always sense. pulling down. Yeah. yeah. Kind of makes me wonder, like you know. I. This that's is an odd limitation. Who's excited for Orville toys? Yes. When is that gonna happen? I hope they have pop know. figures. Oh, oh, see, I still have not bought a pop figure because I know when I buy my first one, I'm gonna want to buy them all. Oh, yeah. I don't have I the money. One. It's the the. Yellow Power original Power Ranger, and I only bought it because she killed herself. April. And I like to, yeah. She uh, was my favorite. Yeah, uh, she was my favorite, and I only bought it because it was kind of gothic to buy that one. Okay, so as a special treat, we're gonna take turns mooning you, and you <laughs> write in the comments who has the best acne ass, who has the best cottage cheese ass, <laughs> who has the best smackable ass. What the who's got hell? the who's got the apple bottom? Somebody here. And who bottom. has the ass that won't quit hurting your face? <laughs> what is wrong with y'all? So tonight? there's four categories. There's four of us. If you want, you can put more than one of us 
in one ca in uh, you know more than one category. I'm not participating. But, so I, I know the full moon's not for a few days, so we thought we'd give it to you early. Winter solstice time, baby. But with booties. <laughs> Put those shades on. We're gonna blind you. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I think they're the most interesting people ever. Aww. Watch his heart. Oh, Donald. I'm so touched. I do. It's true. I watch them all the time. Yeah, that's good. All right. Well, thanks sure for sitting and listening to us babble on about the Orville and stuff and other things. <laughs> <laughs> all right. On that note, thanks for hanging out with us, guys. You're well, wonderful. Bye. Bye. Toodaloo. I don't even know, Dave.